On the final day of Supreme Court hearings of the presidential petition challenging the results of the August 9th elections, Raila Odinga's lawyers sought to show the Apex Court how unsecure the IABC portal and server by extension were. I'm asking that we go to the forms portal in the IABC. We are projecting it up so that it's not said because we have been accused of cooking things forging things. We've been called many names. Julie Soweto, representing Raila, showed the court live on the IBC portal how Forms 34A from two different regions miles apart had similar features generated by one Kims kit. We were told about the Kims kit and how they work. The serialization of the numbers, we have been told that each of the 42,000 201 Kims kits that were used in the election had their own unique Kims kit ID and serial numbers. My ladies and my lords, this is the same Kims kit transmitting or sending results, one from Mount Elgon, 1,000 kilometers away from Nyeri town. Two hours later, how is that possible? The IABC official stamp was also put under scrutiny with some forms displaying what is said to be fake stamps. My lords and my ladies, is that the IABC stamp? It's on the IABC portal, looking like it's been superimposed over another stamp. Ray Lodinga, through his lawyer, also sought to prove to the court how foreigners had access to the IABC servers. When we go to now the bombshell itself, the top left-hand corner of the form. We were told by my colleague, Mr. Gumbo, there were no foreigners in this election. This is on the 9th of August, and at the top left-hand corner there is the name of one of the Venezuelans, Jose Camargo. This is the person who decided the president-elect of the country. The total votes cast according to this particular form is 321, different from what we have just seen. A close scrutiny of the form shows that the number was probably 455, and the 5 is actually similar to the, form, the figures written in the votes cast. But somebody, or somehow, that figure has been changed to make it look like 488. It is obvious to the naked eye when you look at that form. In his rebuttal, senior counsel James Orengo asked the court to protect the constitution by granting their prayer to annul the results as declared by IABC chair of Chebukati. I would ask the court to apply the provisions of the constitution to the letter holistically and allow this uh, petition and return this country and, uh, back to the people who are sovereign and let a proper choice be made of the person who is going to lead Kenya in the next five years. Lawyer Otende Amolo, on his part, sought to poke holes on the assertion by the respondents that the IABC chair was right in his actions to exclude the rest of the commissioners on important decisions pertaining to the presidential election results. Is it fair to invite you to find that the other commissioners do not matter? The chair of IBC is a first among equals, just like in this court. On the voter turnout statistics, Amolo insists IABC was not being truthful with its figures. By whichever permutation, None of the candidates then achieves 50% plus one. Whether you use, you, you, you know, remove rejected votes, you add rejected votes, you, whatever permutations, and there are seven. We wish to submit, your yeah, ladyship, my lords, that you then need to come to the conclusion that even though they try to take time to tamper with the voter turnout, they do not achieve that target. The debate on whether there can be an election if Chebukati was to be removed, the lawyers argued that that was possible. Other question was regarding why the four commissioners did not raise issues to the end. Again, that we will leave for the commissioners to decide. But we can 
profile three theories. One is the issue of the 89th minute penalty, that if you participate in a game and the wrong penalty is given on the 89th minute, you cannot be asked why did you play all along. Sometimes it is the 89th minute penalty that shows the unfairness of the provision. It could be the last straw that broke the camel's back, or it could be a road to Damascus moment. In whichever fashion we look at this, uh, it is an issue that is understandable. Monday next week, Kenya will witness yet another landmark ruling by the Supreme Court judges on the presidential election petition. Whether the country will go back to the polls or not is a question only time will tell. Philip Murutu, K24 from Ilimani Locots, Nairobi.